Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Now we're down here at Hamcation 2020, and look who I found, Mr. Cool Breeze. I am kidding. I am not a celebrity. <laughs> Hello, everyone. KJ4YZ. It's just a pleasure to be here at Orlando Hamcation. My gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I have no reason to go out anywhere and make video. It's all happening right here at the booth. Just amazing. Thank everybody. The activity's just coming towards you, man. It's exciting. It, I mean, it's exciting. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, Eric, I wanted to drop by the booth today and talk to you about a few topics uh, about building up a club. Okay. And I thought one of the things we could talk about is what should a person look for? What are they getting out of a club today versus trying to do it on their own? <clears throat> okay. Um, so I think that in if you, I've had a question before of people that said, you know, uh, talking to someone versus having a club. And I always recommend finding your local club in Elmer's and stuff. I think it's the, the personal uh, touch to it. Right. Like, you you have a club and you know these guys. The, my Vero Beach club that I'm a part of, I know all of them. They're local to me. They're not strangers. Uh, we help each other. They're, they're, it's a very, what's the word, camaraderie? Um, having a local club. It's different, you know, you, you may watch a YouTube video and see me out there and ask questions, but when you know that guy that you can go see and talk to and spend time with and right. learn stuff uh, and brainstorm ideas, I think that is easier with somebody with a club than, than just a stranger or somebody. But I think that's where the camaraderie is, it's club. You know, uh, and that's, um, if that answers your question. Well, there's a lot of things you can do on your own today, but I just find like the knowledge that you have, that um, institutional knowledge, if you will, of, of the Elmers and so forth in a club is well, just every, so valuable. And everybody in a club has a different experience. Right. Everybody, you know, you have this guy's been doing it 50 years, this guy's brand new, this guy's been doing it for five years, and you mix all that together, it's a melting pot. And, and you, you know, having a club is, is just a big deal. And I didn't realize that until I met these guys at the Vero Beach Club. I didn't realize the, the uh, reward of, of that. Right. You know, I figured, oh, it's just a club. You know, there's car clubs, big, big deal, you know, but it, it really makes a big difference uh, when you have people like that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, so, Eric, um, Ham Radio has so many tangents today with digital and everything else that's going on. What's what's exciting to you about ham radio today that could help bring people into the hobby? Well, this can go exciting for different re or different exciting things for different people. To me, I think what's exciting is the fact that how do I? Wow, I can go anywhere with this. I'm going to answer it like this. I think the most exciting thing is space communications, satellites. EME moon bounce, right? Um, things that back in the day were almost impossible because you had to spend a lot of money to do a lot of those types of things. And now you can use a simple handheld as a technician class operator with a very inexpensive or homebrew antenna to make the satellite contacts. Um, and then you get into advanced stuff. We were talking about this the other day. I'm going to be doing EME moon bounce soon. Back then, 30 years ago, it was you had to dedicate acres of real estate and lots of money. Right. You can do this now with something like my 9700 ICOM and a Yagi antenna in my driveway. And I'm going to pull this off. So I think space communications are probably the final frontier. That's about the farthest contact you can make. Um, I think that's what's exciting for me. But what would excite anybody is the fact that it's all accessible now. Whether you go online and research it, build it, or a manufacturer has it, it's all accessible. You don't have to send postcards out anymore and find uh, plans from a guy that knows how to build this and he's the only one. Right. It's so fast-paced now that there's something for everybody in the hobby. For me, I think it's space communication. Satellite and EME moon bounce, I think. Awesome. Well, thanks for that. So, Eric, one of the things that I'm here for this week for Lake Cumberland Area uh, Amateur Radio Association is collaboration between clubs uh, as a way not only to learn between each club, but uh, again to allow amateur radio operators to make relationships, actually build relationships with people outside their just their small little club group. Okay. 
Um, well, that's that's a, a good topic because now in the Vero Beach uh, Club, we have there's actually a Club South and a Club North. The Club South and Vero Beach are sharing repeaters. They're they're collaborating. You have the St. Lucie Club. You have the Indian, you know, the Vero Beach Club, and a uh, big mismatch. But then when you or mix and match, but when you go north. It seems like there's a disconnect. That that club doesn't seem to want to reach out to us. I think that collaboration with clubs is a big deal because you're neighbors with these people. There's right. 50, 50, 60, could be a hundred and some people in the next club or even a distant club. Right. That you can have similar interests, and then you put those two powers together, and then you have a lot of a lot more Elmers, a lot more experiences, more people with different uh, interests and hobbies. I think that clubs should reach out and talk to each other and, and make that, you know, to be honest, there's going to be somebody that's maybe not as friendly as this one, but there's always people in a club that want to reach out and talk to neighboring clubs or other clubs to get together. Once you establish that communication, once you establish that, that bond, it turns into a lot of things. Uh, you know, if there's a uh, search and rescue event, if there's a natural disaster, if there's just a fun field day, mm -hmm. you have these people from this club, your people from your club, all the things that come together between it. I think collaboration between clubs is good. To do that um, may vary. I, I'm really not sure how you would go about starting that, but find first find the clubs that are in your area, find out what they're interested in, and visit. Don't be afraid, don't sit in the back. Go there and, hi, I'm with the Vero Beach Club. I'm visiting your club. We're not competition. There's no walls and best of and who's better. Just go there and talk, meet with them. Hey, come to our club meeting one night. And eventually you strike that that uh, that bond and you guys are, you know, collaboration. Right? Absolutely. If, if, if that uh, makes sense. <laughs> no, that's, that's perfect. And we're trying to do some of that up in Kentucky. And what I'd like to do uh, maybe uh, is continue to work with your club a little bit uh, down the road as far as ideas uh, on how to grow the club and how to... Uh, you know, just keep it fresh. I well, think one well, of the reasons me, the clubs get stale, right? Let me, let me, let me, because I like to ramble. Let me talk about what our <laughs> club has done in the last five years. When I first became aware of the Vero Beach Club, it was a meeting once a month. Uh, hear ye, hear ye, all business, and nobody had an interest to come. Fast forward five years, we have events every other weekend on a Saturday for a QRP outing. Field days are phenomenal. 50, 60 people at a field day from neighboring clubs that come together. It's turned into, you know, kit night on Friday. Bring a kit, bring a, a radio that you want to repair. You've got 40, 50 people that are that can read schematics with their eyes closed, right. that are all through it, and some people that want to learn that. You're teaching that person, but answering that question and fixing this all at the same time. Now it's kit night. Then you have your meetings. It, it's turned into a uh, really a once one of a kind situation there's always something happening in the beginning it wasn't like that so maybe find some members and invite them in that are interested in kit night or interested in portable events start with two three people go out the next thing you know you'll have a winter field day event like we do with a trailer loaded with equipment people out there want to do antennas and everybody having fun and making contacts by the way the bands are not dead call steve q don't be a scopehead absolutely yeah in fact we uh, we did our first winter field day how was Our it? first one, and we had seven people out there, and I ended up doing it overnight uh, oh. and making contacts. And we're hoping that that big builds up that awareness yeah. that these activities are happening. Well, that's and that's another thing. Every time we go to a field day, we're set up, and there's people coming by. We had a wedding show up in front of the boat ramp, and everybody in the wedding show up, and we're like, "Oh, we have an event here." How many people do you think walked away with the card and uh -huh. information about that? And they may return and know, wow, there's a club here. I may be interested. And then you can start teaching them, offering them information. It grows and grows and grows. Awesome. So, Eric, I want to thank you for taking some time this afternoon for uh, sitting down with us. My pleasure. I thank you for uh, this. And it's great here at Orlando Hamcation 2020. If you haven't been to a Hamcation, there's more than just this booth right here. There is so much stuff I have to go around and still check out. So 7-3 and visit Hamcation or a ham fest in your area. Thanks again, Eric. Thanks, step three.